the whole journey just didn't seem real at all. Like who gets to go to the Olympics in Paris and, you know, win gold, but <laughs> I'm just grateful I got the opportunity to even be there. We are pleased to welcome in U.S. Women's National Team Olympic gold medalist, Washington Spirit midfielder and rookie of the year candidate, Croy Bethune. Croy, welcome in. Hi, how are y'all? I am so great. I mean, even better now that we get to talk to you. Um, we, we've missed seeing you out there. You're in the midst of your recovery. How's recovery going? Yes, ma'am. Recovery is going great, honestly. Um, I feel really strong getting mobility back. So we're on the up with re recovery. Oh, music to our ears. Absolutely. I, I myself have been through several knee surgeries. Um, it's it's not great. It's hard, but there are always little positives that come out of these moments. And it's definitely not your first injury. You, you suffered a few ACL tears. This one, hopefully a little smoother than any of those. But what's one thing, a hobby, something to distract yourself outside of soccer that you've picked up over the last couple of weeks? Um, I listen to a lot of music, but I also have a dog and he's just been kind of keeping me a lot of company and giving me a lot of love so we've been hanging out a lot i love that you do it is there like a a favorite like enrichment kind of activity that you do with your dog yeah i love taking him to the park and just letting him run around um he actually just got trained so he's been great with listening um so oh. yeah <laughs> how long have you had him about nine months he's nine months old oh. I like nine weeks so oh, oh my god goodness y'all are just y'all are just building memories together like this right. is not, i'm thinking like you just like you've had him for a little while but no this is this is new this is a new journey for both of you yeah. well you've been adapting to to life as a as a as a dog of a professional soccer player <laughs> yeah it's a lot of fun it's like he's living his best life <laughs> i'm sure what's his name his name is kush um, yeah, he's a, he's a little pity. He's a big old baby. Cutie. You said he's now trained or getting better at listening and things. Uh, what's the coolest trick he knows? Probably. I don't know. He spins on command. Like I don't have to tell him and he'll just follow his tail. It's really cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. My dog is so, uh, my dog is so treat motivated that it's like, he'll do like like a bunch of commands at once, even as soon as he sees like the the little tree. Okay. Yeah, no, shout out to the little pitties. Like mine's a little pity mix. Got a little, got a funny body, but like weird little nugget legs. I love my, <laughs> yeah, I, lo I love my chopper. I, I imagine Kush might have some some similar energy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely adorable. Um, Croy, we know a, a little birdie told us that you're pretty artistic. You like to draw. Have you drawn your dog yet since you've gotten him? I haven't drawn him yet. Um, I'm kind of like a like doodler, um, mm -hmm. or I'll draw like tattoos, that kind of thing. But I might draw his paw or his ears or something like that. Oh, that's adorable. What, what got you into um, like art, like the arts, or just being artistic, or just being creative? Do you have any like you know role models, or how did that kind of come to happen? Yeah, I just feel like it's another way to express myself um, when I'm bored or when I have a lot on my mind. I can kind of express it in art instead of verbally saying how I feel. Um, actually find out, found out that my grandpa was an artist, too, in photography and stuff. So I'm assuming it, it runs in the blood. But it's just a good let go, a good escape. Incredible. It's in the DNA. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And photography, too. Have you ever tried photography or you just draw? You stick with the drawing? Yeah, I actually have a camera. Um, I should start using it again. So we'll work on that. Yeah, you should. You have your very own muse right there, too, <laughs> with your dog. You're right. You're right. You're right. You need all the photos of Kush. <laughs> got y'all. I got y'all. Um, it, this year for you, Croy, it's steering back a little towards the soccer of it. Um, I mean, it's it's not easy to be sidelined with an injury, right? Especially when you have to then watch your team, but there is growth and learning in that. It is, how has um, being sidelined this year, like what have you learned? How has that changed maybe your perspective, especially because you're now a professional and you get to make money doing this? Right. I feel like I've learned a lot about myself. Um, like you mentioned before, I've been injured before. So this isn't new to me, unfortunately, but 
in the pro aspect, I've been learning how patient I am, how appreciative I am. Um, I've also realized like I'm, I'm very proud of my teammates for continuing to thrive and kick some butt. Um, it does suck to sit on the sideline, but I feel like I'm analyzing the game in a different point of view, which can help me when I get back on the field. I love that. You know, you mentioned your, your teammates there and, and something that sticks out for me when I think about the spirit this year is not just you, but this incredible rookie class that exists for, for the spirit. Um, you've obviously had such an incredible season, but we look across the roster. There's a Hal Hirschfeld, you know, there's a Courtney Brown, there's a McKenna Morris, like the list goes on and on and on. Um, what What is it specifically about this rookie class with the spirit that has just sort of kind of clicked? I feel like the relationship you have off the field helps. Um, a lot of us already knew each other, played with each other, played against each other for a lot of years. So I feel like that helps. Um, also, the OGs just making us feel very welcome and including us. And I feel like we there's a lot of us in this class. So we come together if someone's not feeling comfortable, like we help each other out. And I feel like that's helped a lot within being comfortable on the field and being ourselves. Yeah, for sure. I, I wonder, like, with you touched on it a little bit with, with Lisa's question about maybe getting a different type of perspective while you're navigating your rehab. Has there been any opportunity for you to get a little a little bit reflective with it? I know maybe it's tough even with your unavailability um, and playoffs right around the corner, but, like, have you had time to even think about, like, you know, all the assists that you got, the record that you matched, like, if you had a favorite assist? Um, sometimes, I mean, I'm asked questions about it all the time. So I'll answer them or just think about like teams that we're playing. And I'm like, okay, that's what happened in the past game. But I'm really just focused on the future and leaving the past, not leaving it, but <laughs> focusing on getting back. You know? <laughs> Great. You can't forget the past altogether. I mean, right. leading 10 assists. I'm like, that's a, that's a pretty big Girl pass to, to not remember. <laughs> Just trying to build off those assists, you know, get back. There you go. I, I get that. You also had a um, pretty busy summer in, in Paris with the U.S. women's national team ultimately winning gold. But you're, for people that don't know, weren't following your, your U.S. women's national team senior journey, um, a, a little synopsis for everyone. You were named an alternate to the Olympic roster when you hadn't had a camp yet or a cap yet, but you had been in camp. You then earn your first cap before heading to Paris. Then you get called up to the full roster, no longer an alternate at the Olympics. Then you make your Olympic debut and you win gold. I mean, whirlwind. Talk about a crazy like series of events and a few couple weeks. I mean, when you reflect on it, I'm going to make you reflect on it a little bit. Uh, what was going through your mind during all of that? Yeah. Well, when you put it like that, that's very unbelievable. <laughs> um, well, yeah, just staying ready so you don't have to get ready. Like, you never know what's going to happen. Um, everyone's here for a reason. And I got the opportunity to get my cap, get called in, and be on the team to win gold. Um, the whole journey just didn't seem real at all. Like, who gets to go to the Olympics in Paris and, you know, win gold? But... <laughs> I'm just grateful I got the opportunity to even be there. Um, it was really a lot of learning for me, just understanding my role. And when I got the chance to get out there, just performing my best and helping out the team. Corey, you said who who gets to do that? You do. You do. You're, you're talented <laughs> and you deserved it, hands down. Um, during all of that chaos of it and, and just trying to learn and stay in the moment, how did you stay so grounded? Being surrounded by amazing people, um, four of us from the spirit were there. So that that helped out a lot. It's like families being brought with me. Speaking of family, my parents and my brother were there. So having little gaps to get away and reset and the love for my family and the support, it kind of kept my head on straight. Get to that. sneak out and get a baguette with the family. Of course. <laughs> some some okay. croissants and coffee, you know. <laughs> Taking the sights and sounds of France. I love it. I love it. Uh, you, you mentioned um, when talking about some of the spirit rookies and the influence and how things click there, that maybe 
part of that comes with the energy that you receive from from the OGs that you, that you mentioned on the team. While this time with the national team in the summer for the Olympics, was there anyone else that you were able to to rely on during that experience? Like whether it was in a leadership capacity or just sort of like you know, a, a safe word of advice, you know, because this was your first major international tournament and sometimes you don't always know what to expect. Yeah, of course, Trent and Casey were there for me. Um, Hal and I were, we're in the same boat. So walking that road together, um, I would say Lindsay, she actually reached out to me before camp and before the Olympics and was just like, hey, like, congrats. Um, if you need anything, I'm here for you. And that actually meant a lot for me, like, especially coming from the captain. Um, also, Mal, just being in camp and being in the Olympics, she's someone who I've looked at for quite a while as a player, but getting to know her as a person, too, she's very well-rounded, um, and I feel like she kind of took me under her wing as, like, a little sister, so them two really stood out to me, and it actually means a lot when people that have been there are looking at you like, yeah, you belong here, but, like, make sure you're comfortable. Yeah, that's got to feel good reassuring almost to some sense. What did they tell you? Did they give you any piece of advice? Just wise words. Um, being comfortable, like I mentioned, like you do belong here. Everyone's here for a reason. Um, and just being yourself for the most part. So you, you got a little bit of advice from Lindsay Horan and Mallory Swanson, but um Croy, when you were drafted this past year, third overall to Washington, I got to interview you on draft night. And you just talked about how excited you were and you were going to learn so much this year. Um, when you think about Croy Bethune now, today in November, after the year that you've had with Washington, um, 10 assists on the year, winning gold with the U.S. Women's National Team, what's one thing you would go back and tell yourself on draft night ahead of the year that you know you're about to have? That's a great question. <laughs> one thing I would tell myself, man, straight to it, honestly, you got this. Just believe in yourself, you know? As long as I'm being myself out there, I feel like things can't go wrong. Nice. Let's, okay. let's, let's bring it back to the present. Let's bring it back to the present, the spirit, we know what they've been up to this season. They got out there, and you all have been cooking and chopping it up. And now that means postseason. So I was curious that if you found yourself perhaps hosting a playoff watch party, what are your must-haves on the table spread for your NWSL playoff watch party? For me personally? Yeah. Yep. For me, a platter of fruit. I love fruit. I eat it all day, every day. Um, of course, water. You know, I'm still an athlete. You have to stay hydrated. Yep. <laughs> um, maybe some cranberry juice. And then I would say, like, some sausages, um, some mm. crackers. All right. Um, and some, like, miniature sandwiches. Oh. And of course, wings. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> that's that's wings. clutch. Honestly, I feel like the, the quick, the small mini sandwich like i feel like the when you get the party platter i feel like that's a deeply underrated table shred it's right. it's quick it's easy and you could make it in a variety of ways like the sandwich you could make it anything and they're a little filling you know have a couple and you're like okay that was a good snack mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. grab a little, grab a little sandwich in it for yeah. sure okay wings i've got to know how how hot are we going how spicy on the wings i'm from atlanta and we love lemon pepper so Hot lemon pepper, hot honey lemon pepper. Yep. Oh, yum. Okay, I'll be over for the playoff watch party. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Basically, we're all coming over. <laughs> Croy's got the spread. She's got the menu. Let's go. Um, Croy, this year you have rolled up game after game after game, absolutely dressed to the nines. Fire. Fire fits this year. You clearly have a sense of style. Um, I'm going to need you to come help me with my wardrobe. But when you think back to this year and all the different game day fits you wore, which one's your favorite that you rocked? My favorite. I just wore this red um, bomber jacket. It was actually Tiana Taylor's release with some Maharas and the jean shorts. I really like that outfit. Um, 
the Travis Scott jacket was pretty cool. Um, but also, people don't realize the hat that I wore with the red scarf. So that's a – the baseball team was called the Black Crackers. It was the Negro Baseball League, and it was actually my dad's hat. Um, so just, like, detail in that outfit, I really like that one too. Wow, I love that. I love that. There's, like, just the details that you dropped – within some of those outfits I think make them stand out even more shout out to the hat that that was a really really good one it makes me wonder like it are there like um like any fashion role models you had or is it more just like a type of trend or style that you try to find or incorporate I feel like whatever I look at and I like then I'm gonna get it I more so put pieces of clothing together instead of like sets or an outfit so if I like that top and those pants but people typically wouldn't put them together if I like the way it looks then I like the way it looks um my parents also sent me some pictures some baby pictures of me and I'm like okay y'all had me looking good since <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're the fashion role models they like right? they're like we're gonna we gotta get her right right now like right now <laughs> so, a little inspiration for my parents as well Absolutely. Um, okay, so this weekend, coming up on Sunday, Washington gets to host a quarterfinal match against Bay FC. Um, big, big game on the horizon for the Spirit, but what are you going to wear? Do you have your game day fit cooked out yet, Croy? Not quite. I've been thinking about the weather, so what should yeah. I wear? Um, it's at 1230, so it's probably going to be a little warm, but what? stay tuned. I think y'all like that. If you have uh, like ideas, I'll put it together in the outfit for sure. Oh, I like that. Okay, we're going to divert that one to our listeners, people that listen to Attacking Third. Let Croy know what she should rock this weekend um, at the, the home playoff game for Washington. That's exciting. We'll, we'll let you know what they say, Croy. Sure. Um, thank you, Croy, so much for doing this. This was a pleasure to chat with you, and good luck to your team this weekend. We're, we're watching. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. This was a lot of fun. A smile stayed on my face. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. Oh, good. Croy. I mean, us too. Clearly. Clearly. We Next time, um, we'll do the interview with the dog. How about that? Yeah. I'm down. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll bring Chapo and they can meet each other. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. Croy, thank you so much, guys. Thanks for listening to this. Follow Attacking Third wherever you get your podcast. Leave us a five-star rating and review. This was the A3 One Shot, a special interview with Washington Rookie of the Year candidate Croy Bethune. 